We live in a world where we are constantly trying to cope with daily stressors and the hidden traumas from the past, which present current day struggles. Most of us are taught to put this beautiful band-aid on top of our hurt that may actually be caked over in dirt. But think about it. Imagine you just fell down and you skinned your knee. Would you put a band-aid over it? What if it needed stitches? No, you would clean it out first. You'd get all the rocks and grime and all that nasty stuff out of there. Then you would stitch it up so that when you put on that beautiful Band-Aid, you know that that wound will heal. That Band-Aid will come off and your skin would be resilient once again. So why don't we do that with our emotional selves? When it comes to coping, there are so many of these bad coping skills. Bad coping skills. Let's take a look at those. First one is ignoring, one that I personally used to be a professional at. It's the idea of that cartoon ostrich sticking his head in the sand. If I can't see it, it doesn't exist, right? Wrong, it's still there, waiting, growing, ready to attack with a vengeance. I can't tell you how many times things came out of nowhere, but really it's because I wasn't paying attention and hoping it would go away. Second is food. Most of us growing up had very loving parents who didn't wanna see us in pain and we're not really taught how to support somebody else in pain and all we know is that we want to comfort those around us. So when we were children, when it came to feeling bad, uh, our parents would give us a treat, a, a yummy tasty treat that would make us feel better and take our mind off the bad thing that just happened. Unfortunately, it can create a habit of trying to cope and find comfort through food, which just leads to another set of complications. Third, we've got porn or sex, probably the most popular bad form of coping. If you don't believe me, just look at those top ranking Google searches or the success of companies like Pornhub. Coping through pleasure is a huge problem and it's only a temporary fix that can create so many more problems like broken marriages, uh, the need for chemical help, and so on. Fourth, we have drugs. Another really good example of a bad form of coping. It creates things like broken relationships, painful rehabs, and then sometimes even unexpected death. So while it's giving us this temporary high, it's leading to all kinds of problems later on down the road. So let's look at some good coping skills. First is releasing expectations. It's been said that money is the root of all evil, but I really believe that having expectations is the root of all evil. Think about it. Every time you've ever felt disappointed in your life, looking back, it's usually because you had some kind of expectation about how a situation should have gone or how a person should have behaved. If we can release our expectations, then we are less likely to have a situation to have to cope with in the future. This could be releasing expectations on ourselves about how we should be and releasing expectations about others and how they should be. Releasing expectations about an event and also releasing the expectations that other people have on us because their expectations are about them, not you. Second, good coping skill is to start cultivating self-awareness. We'll actually have more videos on this moving forward, so be sure to check back. When it comes to creating a self-awareness practice, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is in every moment where you feel like you need a coping strategy to actually start looking within and start to ask yourself questions like, how am I feeling right now? Does this feeling have a name? Try to give it a label. And then try to see where it is existing in your body. Is it existing in your stomach, in your chest? Is it the weight of the world on your shoulders? The more you can take some time to be present in the moment and actually feel what you're feeling, give it a name, give it a label, bring it outside of you so you can actually look at it, the more you'll start to develop a self-awareness that will lead to less coping in the future. Third, the brain is like a Google search engine. Thanks Google for this wonderful analogy because just like typing a question into Google, the answer you get is going to be determined by the question you ask. So if you are asking a really bad question like, why am I so lame? You're gonna get all the reasons why you're lame. We don't want that. Think about asking good questions. An example might be, what can I do to care for myself 
in this moment. And then listen, listen to what that search engine turns up for you. If you're asking good questions, you will get a good answer. Next, what am I ready to heal or release right now? Usually when we're coping with something, it's because a gift is being presented. Some kind of healing is ready to be had in this moment. So if you can ask yourself, what am I ready to heal? What am I willing to release? What am I willing to let go of now? Listen to that voice and see what it's telling you. Another one might be, what is this moment trying to teach me right now so that I can move forward without having to cope? And again, take that time to listen to that little voice inside. And now for my favorite way to cope, dun, 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 dun. Okay, I don't know where I learned this, but it is really fun and I love to do it. Did you know that you cannot think a negative thought while your hands are thrown up in the air, while you're looking up at the ceiling and smiling. Go ahead and give it a try. There is something about the physiology of being in this winner's pose, this excited expression, the smile on your face, you can't think a negative thought. So while you're in the midst of um, feeling this emotion and trying to cope with this situation, take a chance, throw your arms up in the air, look up, smile, and observe that you're not able to think a negative thought. It's a great way to stop everything right in its tracks. Then you can hop on to asking yourself these good questions about what is the moment trying to teach me or what am I ready to heal now? So when it comes to coping, take some time to develop these good coping skills, release those expectations, start cultivating that self-awareness, ask yourself good questions, throw your arms up, look at the sky, smile with that big beaming smile, and start your path to less coping and more just being present in the moment. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried any of these or if you have your own coping skills that you would like to share with the world. I'd love to hear your feedback. And click like, subscribe, all those good things. Head over to our next video, which is Why Can't I Get Over It? See you there. I know you wanna watch this video. I know you want more coping skills.